This is the scariest ghost for coders. And no, it's not from a horror movie. This is the DSA ghost, the very own infamous data structure and algorithm ghost that haunts programmers everywhere. But today, we are going to destroy that fear. Welcome to the first episode of Next in Code, where we are about to crush all coding fears one episode at a time. So, if you want the coding ghosts to leave you, hit that subscribe button and tap the bell so you never miss an episode. Now, tell me something. I'm sure you must have heard it before. DSA is important, but every time someone says it, you get questions like, where do I even start? Which roadmap should I follow? How do I solve thousands of problems? Too many resources, too much advice. It can be overwhelming. DSA is undoubtedly important. It is behind Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and even Tesla's self-driving cars. But here's what no one tells you. DSA isn't just for cracking interviews. It's about training your brain to think like a problem solver. And that is what separates great coders from the rest. So let's address the elephant in the room. How do you go from DSA beginner to DSA pro? Let's cover the basics and then break it down step by step. Stay with me. First, let me explain the basics of DSA using an analogy. Imagine you have a huge library with a million books. You need to find one specific book. If the books are randomly placed, you'll spend hours searching, right? But if the books are sorted alphabetically, you can find what you need in seconds. That's data structure, a way to organize information efficiently. Now, imagine a librarian who has different tricks to find a book faster. That's algorithms, a step-by-step -step instruction to solve a problem quickly. So in simple words, DSA is all about organizing information and using the smartest tricks to get what we need fast. Now, let's get down to the steps. Step 1. Learn a programming language, the tool you will use. Before learning DSA, you need a tool to write and test your ideas. That tool is called a programming language. There are three main languages people use for DSA. C++, the Formula One car of programming. It's super fast and widely used in competitive programming. Java, the enterprise favorite used in Android apps, banking systems, and large-scale applications. Python, the go-to language for AI and data science, known for its simplicity and readability. If you're a beginner, C++ is a great choice due to its speed and extensive libraries. Step two, learn how to measure efficiency. Have you ever abandoned a website because it took forever to load? That happens due to inefficient code. We consider an algorithm's time and space complexity to measure its efficiency. Both can be expressed using big O notation, which describes how performance scales as input size grows. O1, fastest, like turning on a switch. O log n, very fast, like searching for a word in a dictionary. O n, slower, like checking every name in a guest list. O n squared, much slower, like comparing every student's marks in a class. O 2 to the power of n, nightmare mode, like doubling your work at every step. Tech companies hire DSA experts to write efficient, optimized code that runs lightning fast. Step 3. Master the core data structures. Data structures help you store and organize data efficiently. This includes arrays, like an egg carton, where each slot holds exactly one egg. Linked lists, like a train, where each carriage is connected to the next. Microsoft Word uses this to store undo history. Hashing, the magic behind Google search, password security, and databases. It allows instant lookups, like jumping to the right page in a book without flipping through. Stacks and queues, used in undo features, browser history, and task scheduling. Trees and heaps, essential for databases, compilers, and hierarchical storage, like file systems. Once you master these, you're ready for the next step. Step 4. Basic algorithms. Algorithms are problem-solving techniques that make programs faster and more efficient. They are of two types. Sorting algorithms, the process of arranging data in a specific order, usually ascending or descending. It helps in faster searching, better organization, and efficient data processing, 
under which comes bubble sort, the slowest but simplest, compares and swaps adjacent elements. Insertion sort, sorts one element at a time, like arranging playing cards. Merge sort, uses the divide and conquer method for faster sorting. Quick sort, one of the fastest used in real world applications like databases. Then there is searching algorithms, the process of finding a specific piece of data within a data set. Whether it's looking for a contact on your phone, finding a product on Amazon, or retrieving a record in a database, searching algorithms make it fast and efficient. Under this comes linear search. The simplest method checks each element one by one. Binary search, fast and efficient, works by dividing a sorted list into halves. Jump search, skips elements in fixed steps, then do a linear search. Interpolation search, an advanced version of binary search works best for uniformly distributed data. Exponential search, used when the size of data is unknown, like searching in infinite lists. Once the basics are covered, you can move to the fifth step, which is graphs, the backbone of maps and networks. Graphs represent connections. Google Maps uses Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest route. Social media. Facebook's friend suggestions are powered by graph theory. Networking. The internet itself is structured as a graph. Then comes step six. Learn dynamic programming. This is where computers learn to solve problems faster by remembering previous solutions. Just how Google Maps finds the fastest route by caching past computations, web browsers load pages faster using cached data. Video streaming services reduce buffering by storing previous segments. Buffer caching. Dynamic programming, which is DP, is used in all of these applications, making it a must-learn for serious coders. Post this comes the final step, applying DSA to real-world problems. DSA is not just about coding, it's about solving real problems. And guess what? The world loves problem solvers. Want to land a job at Google, Amazon or Meta? DSA gets you there. Want to build the next big app or game? DSA makes it run 10x faster. It's the secret sauce behind Google's lightning fast searches, Netflix's perfect recommendations, and even self-driving cars. And here's the best part. You can learn it with the roadmap I just shared. Because at the end of the day, your skills will shape your future, not just your degree. That's all for the first episode of Next in Code. See you in the next episode. Till then, keep learning and keep coding.